Hello and welcome. My name is Amir and in this video we are going to create a stopwatch, something similar to the stopwatch that you probably have on your smartphone. It will have a start button, it will count the time and uh, we can stop it, we can have a lap. So if I press the lap, then a new lap starts, then we can stop it, we can resume and we can reset it. Okay, this is going to be written in React and we are going to use use state and use effect which are probably two of the most common hooks in React. Okay, so let's go and jump right into the code. Okay, so here I am in my VS code and I'm creating a React app at the current folder that I have created here. This will probably take a few seconds so I will pause the video and come back when the installation is done. Great, now our app is installed and we can use npm start to start it. Okay, now we have our app here working. Go to the source, then in the app I will remove this one and add a few CSS classes that I have already written. I'm not going to cover this, these are just basic CSS uh, that we are going to use. But of course you can go to my GitHub channel and uh, get this file. Okay, so I would go here, go to the app.js. I don't need any of this part. Let me close this so I have more room to work with. Right, so I don't need the logo here and I have an empty app. Great. So if I look at this uh, stopwatch that is working, we need to have two states here one state to know about the stopwatch running status, is it running or not, and another one for the elapsed time. So I would go here, I would say that the time and set the time, and I'm using the use state and pass the initial value of zero. So now I have the time as a state and the set time to set this time. Right, great. Then I would have another one. I would call this one is running. And of course there is a function to set that one. Set is running. In the beginning, the stopwatch is not running. So the user state is false. Great. Now if I go back here and say time, and go here, I would see the number zero here, which is correct. Great. Next up, I need to have two buttons to start and stop the timer. Okay, but uh, first let me add two div, one for the, uh, let's say display part, which will show the time for now and another one for the buttons, which will include the buttons. Great, and I don't need this time anymore. If I go to the app, now this is the same thing. Great, so as I said, I have two buttons. So button, I will call this one start. There is another one called stop that you can see here. The things that these two buttons will do is to set the status of the app. So here I would say that when the start is clicked just set the is running to be true which means that we are starting the timer. The same thing would go for stop, but uh, we were only just turning off the running, so to say. So this is this part, and here I can say that, uh, give me the string of that is running to see. So this is false now. If I press start, it will go true and then false and then true. So, okay, this is working, perfect. Now, when this set is running goes to true, 
we would need something that lets us update the time every like uh, hundredth of the second that can be easily done by using the use effect why we're using the use effect because this is the thing that is happening here is a side effect in our application which will happen by changing the state of is running okay so let me import it here first of all this use effect will take two parameters one is a callback function which will be called and the second one is a dependency array this dependency array is the array of some items or no item that if changed this function will be run so for example if I say is running here and I say log the test value here and if I go here and you can see that I can see the test and this is running twice because once when the component is loaded and once when the is running has some value if I remove this part you can see that this is only running once after the component is loaded or mounted this is the same as using the component did mount on the class version of the react components this effect should only run when the is running is set to true or to false so we need to know when to run this function but how can we update the time like every 10 milliseconds or every hundred of the seconds that can easily be done by using the set interval function which is a function in JavaScript this function will also take a callback function and a duration and based on the duration or the delay that we enter here this function will be called after that delay so if I say for example 1000 here and say log something to the console like the test you would see that every one second this test would be changed okay great uh, the only thing that we need to do instead of just logging the test here is set the time that's the thing that we want to do and we want to add one to the time that we already have so we would say time and add one to the sorry 10 to the time and this can be done like every 10 milliseconds this value is in milliseconds okay so if I go back here you can see that the time is going on great okay but this is running forever like if I go here this is working before I press the start so I need to say if is running is true then do the interval like so and if I go back here the time is stop and when I press the enter sorry when I press the start this will start okay but when I'm pressing the stop I need to get rid of this interval that can be done in the return function of this use effect this return value has a couple of purposes first it's used to define a cleanup function that will be executed when this component is, mount is unmounted or when this uh, dependency array is changed so this is the place that we can remove this interval but how can we get to this interval from here we need to have a reference to that function so I would say let interval and then I would uh, set this interval here to be a reference to this function and in the return function I can use the clear interval which is another JavaScript function that will take a reference to a function so if we're looking at this again we are setting an interval which is a variable and then if our timer is running we would start the interval and we would add 10 to it like every 10 milliseconds 
and when the dependency array is changed, when is running is changed, we would clear that interval. So let's go and see if it's working or not. We would start, this is going on, and if I press stop, it would stop. And then I press start again, which works as a resume button. And then I can stop it again. And this is working fine. Great. But the value that is showing here is not correct, so we need to format this. So let's say instead of the time, I need to format this time. And uh, use it here. So const format time. This would take a millisecond value, which we are passing here. And then we need to format it. So we need to have the, like here, we need to have the minute part, the second part, and the like hundreds of the seconds part. And then we need to like join them together. So I'm going to have a string literal returned, something like this. And here I can get the minute of that time and uh, like this like this and like this so get the minute get the second and get the like hundreds of the second and each of these functions will be defined here so i would say get h is a another function that will get a millisecond value and it will convert it to a minute the same thing is for get second and get minute here so this is hundreds this is second and this is minute so for the hundreds the only thing that we need to do is to divide this ms by uh, 110 this value can obviously go above 100, so we need to get the remainder of this value by 100. So the h part, which is the hundredths part, uh, should be always divided by 100 so that we get the value between like 0 and 99. Something similar is happening with the second here. We would divide this value by 1000 and we would divide it by 60 for that second to be between 0 and 59. Uh, same thing similar happens here for the minute part and we are dividing it by 1000 and by 60 to get to the minute part. Okay great uh, so this is missing something but I just want to show you the value here. So if I refresh and then start, as you can see, this crazy value is here and we need to get rid of this part here. So we need to floor them down. So mat.floor for this one. And the same thing goes for the second as well. If I go back here and start, refresh and start and you can see that this is working fine now but I need to add like a zero here before before this six or here so that these values are like two digits in order to do that uh, here I would add a zero in the beginning and add that to this value and in the end I would just grab the two last digits. And same would go here. Now this is much more clear. So if I start, this is working perfect. Great. Uh, uh, these, these four functions can of course go into their own uh, utility function that we can define here. But for this example, 
it's fine to leave them here because this is just for training. Uh, okay, so the next stop is that these these buttons should not always be visible. So if I am in the beginning, I should only see the start and I shouldn't be able to see the stop. So I need to conditionally render them. I would go here and I would say the start button should only be available when I see the is running is false. So when I am not running and when the time is greater than zero. Sorry, and the time is zero. So if these two conditions are met, then show the uh, is running, which is correct. And if I start, it should go away. Great. For the stop, the stop should only be visible when the uh, timer is running. That's it. So if I go here, refresh, this is correct. Now in this case, we need to have a resume button here. So when I start, I can only stop it. And when I press the stop, I am in a state that I cannot start, I can only resume. So let me have another uh, button here called resume. And this button will only be available when we are not running, but our time is greater than zero. So in cases like this, start again, I'm starting, I can now only stop. And when I'm stopping, I can do resume or I can do the reset. So now resume is working and the resume function is the same as the start button. It would set the is running to be true. And uh, then we would need to have a reset button as well to reset our counter. So I would go here and say this is reset. And the thing that this reset button does is just sets the time back to be zero. And when can I do the reset? Exactly when I am not running and the time is greater than zero, which means that I have already uh, pressed one of, I have already pressed the start button and we have some time. So let's go and see it in action here. If I press start, I cannot resume and I cannot reset. I can only stop when I stop then I can resume or I can reset. If I reset, I would go to the beginning state. And if I resume, I would resume. Great. So this is a working stopwatch for now. The next part, which is like a bonus part, is this lap. So if you look at your smartphone, you will see that there is a lap button. And when you press that lap button, there will be a new lap added to the list of the laps. And uh, if I reset it here, you can see that when the app starts, there is always a lap that is counting the same as this lap. And when I press the lap button, a new lap will be added and the uh, laps before that will always be still. So if I have like this much lap, all of these values will be still and only this one is running as, as this one is running. Okay, so how can we implement that one? First, we need to have a button for that. I would copy and paste it here and say this is a lap and the lap should only be running when our app is running. And for now, let's remove this function here and see, go back here, restart, start. When I start, I can do the lap and it does nothing. Great. The only thing that this button should do is add a new lap to the list of the labs that I already have. And the keyword here is the list. So the laps that I'm showing here, or I'm showing here is an array of items. 
so I need to store it. Where can I store it? Of course in a state. So I would go here and say labs and uh, set labs. In the beginning it's an empty array and when I press the lab the only thing that I do is add a new lab to the list of the labs. So the set labs will be called here with an array of all the labs that I already have and a new lab. This new lab will always start at zero. Look here. When I resume, when I press the lab, just check it here. It starts from zero. Great. So we need to have it starting from zero. So if I go back here and go here and uh, let's say start and I say lab and I stop, go to the components here it stocks, uh, let's do it again yes if I go to the app and press the lab a bunch of times you can see that they are added to the state great and now we need to update the last item of the labs that can also be done in another use effect because this is also another effect that is taking place when the exactly when the time changes so when the time changes two kinds of updates can happen if i reset my uh, timer all the labs should go away so this is easy if the time is running I need to do something with my labs otherwise I would reset the labs to be an empty array so let's see this part in action come here this is my app and this is my labs so if I start if I say I have a bunch of labs then I stop and when I reset all those labs go away which is correct Great, but what if the time is running and I press the lap? Let's watch it here. Now that this is running, I need to get this item and calculate the value of this. The value that this has is the value of all of these laps added together minus the running time. And it will be shown here. So. I need to get these values added together. So I would say that the last items of the array is the labs and I would slice it from zero to the labs.length minus one. So I'm getting these three values and I would have a, uh, sorry, this is not last, this is the rest which means these three and there is a last or our current one that is this value minus these three values so I would say uh, the time that we have minus those rest all added up so how can I add them up because this is a array I can use the reduce function on the array and say the accumulator and the current value and add all those values up and the starting point is a zero i'm not going into the reduce function deeply but uh, to take a brief look at it this reduce function works on arrays and it has two inputs one is a callback function that will be run on items of this array that we have here this labs array and one is the initial value so now i have the last item which is this one now i need to set the state of the uh, labs based on these values so i would say set labs to be the rest which was the same and the new value for the last so if I uh, go here say start and press the lab 
a bunch of times you can see that I have different values for the labs the last thing that I need to do is just to uh, is just to format these values so here after the buttons I can have another value for another div sorry for the labs and I'm rendering the labs here so the labs dot map them uh, let's say lap and uh, like the index of them that will be used for the key of this map so I would say div and uh, I would give a key to be the i this is for react to find out this div and uh, we're closing the div and here I can say the that lap this would show these values like this and I need to format them just like we are formatting them here so the only thing that I need to do is to say format the time of that lap and this is format time like so and they are shown here but uh, to make it look nicer I would say this is lap i plus one uh, so that I'm getting the values from 1 onwards so now you can see I have lap 1, lap 2, lap 3, lap 4, 5, 6, 7 and so forth and so on so let's restart the app and see if it's working yes I have a lap, another lap, another lap I can stop, I can resume and my last lap will go on I can lap, stop and reset and the labs should go away great so yeah this was about uh, this beautiful stopwatch i hope you have enjoyed the video and probably learned something from this video uh, please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel it would help me greatly to provide new contents to the channel and the code is as always available on my github channel and the link is in the description thank you for watching and uh, see you in the next video